No Way Up, Movie Recap, 2024. When the movie starts, we see a woman's body falling into the ocean, only to wake up in panic moments later. It's just a nightmare for Brandon. He's a bodyguard for Ava, the governor's daughter, and feels guilty for failing to protect her mother. Ava meets her friends Jed and Kyle at the airport, and they're all going on a trip together. The guys aren't thrilled that Brandon is tagging along, but Ava insists it's for security. Every situation has the potential for violence. Here, it's virtually zero. Ava and her friends settle in the back for privacy as they board the plane, noticing surprisingly few passengers. Shortly after takeoff, the plane starts shaking and the engine overheats. As the plane continues its flight, the pilot reassures the passengers after a minor incident with birds. But another about a shaking soon occurs and an engine catches fire. The pilot urges everyone to buckle up as fear spreads among the passengers. Suddenly, a piece of the engine breaks off, striking the side of the plane and fatally injuring a passenger. The impact creates a rupture in the fuselage, causing a rapid change in pressure inside the cabin. Bags and belongings go flying, hitting passengers, while those who didn't fasten their seatbelts are thrown around uncontrollably. Within moments, a section of the plane's wall blows off, creating a large hole, and passengers are sucked out into the open sky. Despite Brandon's efforts to help, he's unable to save a man who is blown away by the strong wind. Another passenger tries to cling to the seats, but they give way and he too is swept off the plane. As the plane loses most of its passengers, it plummets into the ocean, quickly filling with water. Brandon is injured by debris, and many passengers are crushed by shifting seats upon impact. After sinking to the seabed and becoming lodged at an angle, an airlock forms at the back, sparing Eva, her friends, and flight attendant Danilo. However, Kyle sustains a broken arm. Amidst the chaos, Brandon emerges with Rosa and her unconscious grandmother, Marty, who Danilo revives with chest compressions. Sadly, Rosa's grandfather didn't survive. Brandon takes charge, calming the group and emphasizing the importance of remaining patient until rescuers arrive. Despite Ava's suggestion to swim through a hole in the plane, Brandon advises against it due to the low chances of survival. Danilo reassures them that help should be on the way, and Brandon stresses the need for backup oxygen as a precaution. Danilo informs the group that the emergency oxygen tanks in the back are empty. Remembering a passenger had a medical oxygen tank, Marnie asks Brandon to retrieve it along with her husband's hat. Brandon volunteers and dives into the water, searching through the plane's corridor and finding the items requested. As he explores further, he encounters a shark swimming through the hole in the aircraft. The shark attacks Brandon, causing him to fight back fiercely. Concerned by the disturbance in the water, the group anxiously watches as Brandon resurfaces, warning them to stay back and revealing his severe wounds inflicted by the shark. Brandon, still catching his breath, hands over the oxygen tank and hat before apologizing to Ava. Suddenly, he's pulled back into the water, and the group witnesses the shark devouring him. Horrified, they retreat to the employee's area, agreeing to follow Brandon's advice to wait. Marty steps in to tend to Kyle's injured arm, drawing from her experience as a wartime nurse. Despite Kyle's cries of pain, she manages to reset his bone and fashion a makeshift splint. Meanwhile, a helicopter searches for the crashed plane, prioritizing the governor's daughter's safety. Inside the plane, the survivors hear unsettling sounds as the plane shifts, indicating it may collapse further. Jed's negativity begins to weigh on the group, prompting Danilo to open the retrieved oxygen tank. They observe the water turning red as sharks enter to feed on the drowned bodies. The plane shakes and they spot sharks swimming outside their window, further adding to their fear. Ava reassures Rosa, but the helicopter's failure to locate them adds to their anxiety. They estimate they have a few more hours to monitor the water level before it reaches them. As the metal continues to creak and water seeps through the ceiling, the group grows uncertain about the plane's stability. Suddenly, the plane lurches downward, sliding for several minutes before stopping again. Although everyone holds on and avoids injury, the new angle causes water to rise inside the plane more rapidly. Recognizing the precarious situation, they decide they must swim out. Rosa suggests using bubbles to distract the sharks, recalling something she learned in school. Kaya remembers that some passengers had scuba equipment, which could help them breathe underwater. Danilo explains that the equipment is in the baggage hold, accessible through a hatch, though the oxygen tanks may be empty. 
Seeing the potential usefulness of the scuba gear, Ava encourages the plan, but Jed's negativity dampens their spirits. Ava retreats to the bathroom for a moment of privacy to ease her fears, where she confronts her emotions. Returning, she reassures Rosa that it's normal to feel afraid. Meanwhile, with only 15 minutes of fuel remaining, the helicopter finally spots plane debris floating on the water's surface. Divers jump into the water and quickly locate the plane, prompting the survivors to signal for help from inside. Help! Over here! Help! Come on! Help! One diver swims towards the hole while the other approaches the window to reassure the survivors. Suddenly, a shark appears behind the diver at the window, unnoticed by him. The survivors warn him, but he turns around and finds nothing. However, when he looks back at the plane, he's attacked and killed by the shark, leaking the survivors horrified. They hear noises above the plane and see the diver's leg floating away, indicating his demise. Concerned for the other diver, they check the corridor, but he doesn't appear, leading them to assume he's also dead. Meanwhile, the helicopter, low on fuel, prepares to leave but ensures help is on the way. Outside, Ava suggests taking the other diver's oxygen tank if he's dead. As she peers underwater, she spots a shadow but can't confirm if it's the diver. Jet tries to investigate by standing on the seats but slips and falls into the water. Although he surfaces laughing from his prank, the laughter quickly turns to terror as the shark closes in on him, causing panic among the survivors. As Jed fights off the shark, the group rushes to pull him to safety, but they realize he's lost a leg in the attack. Marnie treats Jed's wound while Rosa stands behind the curtain. Using seatbelts as makeshift tourniquets, Marty stops the bleeding, but Jed mourns the loss of his ability to participate in triathlons. Determined to find a way out, Ava volunteers to search for the scuba gear. Despite the baggage hole being flooded, Ava dives in with a flare to search for the equipment, unaware of an octopus nearby. When the flare goes out, the others worry, but Ava returns with the gear just in time. They find only four suits, and as they hear something hitting the plane, they rush to the window but find no diver. Tragically, Jed succumbs to his injuries, prompting a desperate attempt at resuscitation from Ava, halted by Marnie's realism. As the plane shifts again, the cockpit acts as an anchor, but water rises faster, necessitating a swift escape. Remembering Rosa's fact about sharks and bubbles, they plan to use oxygen canisters to deter them. However, Kyle's childhood trauma surfaces, revealing his fear of swimming and adding another challenge to their escape plan. Encouraged by Ava and Rosa's words, Kyle agrees to try swimming despite his fear. Ava collects as many oxygen masks as possible while avoiding the sharks hitting the plane. With the ceiling cracking, the group changes into their diving suits, and Marnie selflessly volunteers to go without one, knowing she'd slow them down due to her age. After bidding Jed farewell, the survivors enter the water, noticing the plane beginning to slide downward. As the cockpit falls into the abyss, signaling the plane's impending descent, Marnie insists Ava and Rosa go first. They encounter a shark, blocking their path in the corridor, but scare it away with an oxygen canister, clearing the way for them and, eventually, Kyle and Danilo to join. Marnie stays behind, accepting her fate, while Kyle, panicking, swims back for air but is attacked and killed by a shark. Danilo, terrified, swims to safety with Rosa and Ava, who retrieve a tank from the deceased diver to replenish their air. Ava sends Rosa and Danilo through the hole with the tank, but a shark blocks her path as she prepares to follow. Ava remains still as the shark swims past, but its tail hits her mask, risking her safety. As Ava swims towards the front of the plane, she notices more sharks entering through the hole prompting her to pick up her pace. As the plane accelerates its descent, the increasing water pressure makes it difficult for Ava to move. Still, she clings onto the seats and pushes forward, reaching the front hall just before the plane plunges into the abyss. With the plane now submerged, Ava begins swimming towards the surface, but soon her air runs out, causing her to lose consciousness. Fortunately, her buoyant floaties keep her afloat, and upon reaching the surface, Ava regains consciousness and gasps for air. Panicked by the absence of the others, Ava is relieved when helicopters rescue her. She learns that Danilo and Rosa have already been saved, but sadly, Ava has to deliver the heartbreaking news of Marnie's fate to Rosa. Rosa tosses her cherished plushie into the water in a poignant farewell gesture before falling asleep in Ava's comforting embrace. Thank you for watching this movie recap. We'll have another movie recap for you soon. See you again. Until next time, it's Ruwine time.